Greetings, friends around the world. This is Dr. Bob Teal for the Bible News Prophecy Channel. Today I'd like to talk about Tulip Calvinism. Predestination. Huh? Tulips, what does this have to do with predestination or salvation? There was a Protestant reformer by the name of John Calvin. And he lived in the 15th century. He had his own ideas about God's calling and God's plan. And it developed in what's called uh, five-point Calvinism or TULIP Calvinism. And TULIP is an acronym for various things. The T stands for something, the U, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to go through each of the five points today and explain whether or not from a biblical perspective it makes sense. The first T, T, total depravity. All men fell in Adam, leaving them dead in sins and incapable of responding positively to God. Well, that's the claim. Yet, that's not considering certain things that the Bible teaches. Now, I'm going to primarily be reading from the New King James Version of the Bible, and I'd like to read from Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 7, verse 29. That God made man upright, but they have sought out many schemes. Well, this idea of total depravity doesn't seem to take that into consideration. Now, it's true that the Bible teaches that Adam all dies, but also teaches that humans are capable of responding positively to God's calling. And in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 22, we read something from the Apostle Paul. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. All died in Adam, and all will be made live, alive in Christ. All, who, all will have an opportunity for salvation, not just a few. And as Abraham said in Genesis 18, verse 25, Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Certainly, God has a plan to properly offer salvation to all. And it's certainly something that a loving God would do. Now consider... God is wise, all-knowing, all-powerful, and God is love. Truly, he has a plan that's going to result in more than just 1% or 2% of people being saved. One of the issues I've always had with five-point tulip Calvinism is essentially it's somewhat racist. Basically, certain people were called mostly European-type people, uh, and those are the only ones to be saved. There'd be a few scattered from Asia or Africa or wherever else, Islands of the world would have even heard the, uh, God's message throughout most of the, most of the uh, most of the age. Okay, that's like one or two percent of people might be saved, and that's considered God of love. I don't think so. I don't think God had a plan to predestine most people to fry forever, which is what five point two Calvinism. That's the end result of what they tend to teach with this. Well, anyway, let's go and look at the second point: the U for the tulip. U unconditional election. From eternity past, God chose certain men to be saved by his grace without regard to any merit foreseen in them. Now it's true that God did predestine some to be saved. And the Bible says that he didn't call them because they were great or noble or mighty. He called the, the, the poor or the weak in the world. But Jesus made it clear that many are called and few are chosen. This indicates that in this age, people have a choice. If God calls you, and you won't respond. Jesus told parables about the sower planting seeds, and not everybody responded. Okay, so the idea that it's uh, uh, unconditional uh, election, uh, there's some conditions associated with it. Now let's look at the third point. Limited atonement. Okay, L. Limited atonement. God sent his son to make full and effective payment only for the sins of the elect that those he had predestined for salvation. But that's not what the Bible says. I want to read John 3, 16 and 3, 17. A lot of people stop at verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. This is not limited to just a couple of percent of the population of the planet. I consider this is a blasphemous point, this limited atonement thing. Jesus died for all. Let's go to 1 John chapter 4. 
We're going to start the, in the middle or the end of verse 8, 1 John 4. God is love. And this is the love of God has manifested toward us, that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. And this is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we all ought to love one another. Verse 16, God is love. Now there's not one verse in the Bible that teaches the atonement is meant to be limited just to a few are being called now. Let's go to 1 John 2, verse 2. And he himself is a propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the, also the whole world. But this goes totally against this idea of limited atonement. And let's go to Luke 19, starting in verse 9. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he is also son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which was lost. Jesus came to save the lost, not just some small amount of elect people. Now, we're going to go to John 12, verse 47. And if anyone hears my words and does not believe, I do not judge him. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. The idea that Jesus came to save more than just a very few is consistent with Scripture. In Hebrews 9.28, it says, Jesus came to bear the sins of many. Salvation is going to be offered to all who ever lived. Now, let's go to the fourth point of tulip. I. I. Irresistible grace. Those God elected to salvation and for whom Christ died, he effectively calls by regeneration from spiritual death, thus rendering them capable of expressing saving faith. Well, the Bible is clear that only those that God calls is going to be saved. Yet Calvinists fail to realize that those who are not predestined to be called now will be an opportunity, have an opportunity later. Let's read something from the Apostle Paul from Romans 10, verse 20. But Isaiah is very bold and says, I was found by those who did not seek me. I was made manifest to those who did not ask for me. While Calvinists might want to imply that this means unconditional election, it actually means that those that God that don't seek God in this age are going to have an opportunity in the age to come. And we have a free booklet online called Universal Offer of Salvation, How Can God Save the Lost? And we'll get to that later, but you have to save them through Jesus Christ. There's only one name under heaven by which you can be saved, uh, Acts 10, uh, Acts 4, 10 through 12, excuse me, and that's Jesus. But Jesus does have a plan. Uh, James was inspired to write, James 1, verse 18, of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be kind of first fruit of his creatures. Those who are called now are first fruits. The implication is therefore there will be other fruits later. This is something Calvinism does not seem to understand. The Apostle Paul also wrote about this fruit, first fruits idea for example, in Romans uh, 8, verse 23. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit. Now, I want to go to 1 Timothy chapter 2. I'm going to start in the middle of verse 3. This is a concept here that a lot of people don't understand. God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth, for there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. So God wants all to be saved. He's got a plan. It will happen in due time. A lot of people don't understand that. They think everybody's got to be called in this age, but God has a plan the age to come. Now let's go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 10. Read something from the Apostle Paul that in a dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. So we're talking about a dispensation of the fullness of times. The tulip Calvinism concept doesn't grasp this at all. Now let's go to point P, the fifth part of tulip. P, perseverance of saints. 
Those God elected in Christ, called in regeneration, justified by faith, he continually quickens so they will never fall from his grace, but only enter eternal glory. That is flat out in contradiction with Scripture. Let's go to Matthew chapter 12, verse uh, 31, 32, because there is an unpardonable sin. Therefore, I say to you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the Holy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him, either in this age or in the age to come. So we clearly see hey, there is an age to come, and you can blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Those who are not called and get God's Spirit, how can they blaspheme the Spirit? So the fact that they can suggest, shows that this perseverance of the saints concept is inaccurate the way the Calvinists teach it. Now let's also go to Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4 through 6. We read something else here. For it's impossible for those who were once enlightened, which means some could have been, and who have tasted the heavenly gift, and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit, and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come, if they fall away, to renew them again to repentance, since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and put him to open shame. So the fact that they can fall away is clearly from Scripture. And we know there's a prophecy about falling away in uh, Second Thessalonians as well. Salvation, the opportunity for salvation can be lost because you do have free will. Uh, let's go to Second Corinthians 13, verse 5. I think the Apostle Paul makes this clear here as well. Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Christ Jesus is in you unless indeed you are disqualified? Well, how are you going to be disqualified? If you can't be disqualified, well, obviously you can be disqualified. In Mark 4, verse 14, let's read a parable. I think also proves that this P portion, the perseverance of the saints, the way Calvinists have explained it, is an error. The sower sows the word. And these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word which is sown in their hearts. These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground, who when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness. And they have no root in themselves, and so endure only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Verse 18. Now these are those ones swung among the thorns. They are the ones who hear the word, and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desires of other things, entering in, choke out the word, and becomes unfruitful. So we see, again, the, this perseverance way they, they explain it is simply not true. Jesus said in Matthew uh, 10, 22, and you'll be hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures the end will be saved. He repeats this in Matthew 24, 13, and also in Mark uh, 13, 13. The grammatical implications of this is if you don't endure the end, you're not going to be saved. Now, who will be saved? Well, those who are called who respond to the calling, repent, baptize, get God's Holy Spirit. But let's go to Revelation chapter 22 and read verses 14 to 15 to learn something else that I don't believe uh, those who practice five-point Calvinism fully grasp either. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gate into the city. For outside are dogs and sorcerers, and sexually immoral, and murderers and idolaters, in whoever loves and practices a lie. Now, is it those who don't want to obey God's commandments are not going to make it? That's another criteria. As I said before, basically, the tulip predestination seems to be based on what I consider a semi racist concept that only about 2% of humanity will ever be saved. God has a plan of salvation. God is calling people now and will call others later. Now, for uh, 
Today's message, you can find information about it in our free booklet, Is God Calling You? Again, we have another booklet uh, about universal offer of salvation to give some more details. But as far as tool of predestination goes, it is not biblical. Uh, most of the points uh, uh, are contradicted by scripture. I gave you some of the scriptures to consider. So don't believe tulip Calvinism or those type of traditions. Instead, believe the word of God. And God does have a plan and it isn't to uh, make 98% of humanity suffer eternity, which is basically what tulip Calvinism teaches. God is love and God is wise and God's plan of salvation will work. Believe the word of God. Don't believe tulip Cal Calvinism. This is Dr. Bob Teal for the Bible News Prophecy Channel.